All right, everyone, welcome, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am so excited to be bringing to you live my coach, my mentor, Director Melody Washington. Uh, before I get started, if you guys are watching for the first time, uh, my channel is really focused on really helping to motivate educate and inspire you to really work your travel business. But the key to happiness is finding something that you're passionate about, that you are in love with, and do that for the rest of your life. You get to help so many people at the same time. So that is why I'm here today. So this uh, segment is called, you know, Let's Talk Travel with Hawa Saipol. And the person that I'm bringing to you live today is Melody Washington. So we're going to get uh, to talk with her and have a conversation. Um, the one thing I want to just talk about is um, oftentimes we see people, we see their success, they, we see, you know, from the outside, from a distance, um, all their glory. You see a person's glory, but you don't know their story. So today is about story, her journey in her, um, the way that she has worked her travel business, how she has been able to retire 10 years earlier than she's supposed to, which means that she was able to retire in her 40s. And it's really significant for me because I'm in my 40s. But not only that, she's been able to do that within three years, working this business part time, all the while working full time with state government. So I really want to segment into that. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for being on. Thank you, Director Melody Washington, for your time this morning. Thank you for having me. I am excited about being on here. I've listened to some of your YouTubes and it's really hot. That's what the young people say. So I'm excited. Thank you for having me. Hey, I had to learn it too. I was like, hey, I don't know anything about it, but I'm going to learn it. So the one thing I know is what, if you're willing to learn it and you're willing to do it, guess what? We can make it happen. <laughs> so I'm really excited. And get the power. <laughs> That's right. Do the thing, get the power. Um, <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for being with uh, on with us today. So go ahead and tell us who is Melody Washington? Well, first and foremost, I am a glamma. I like to say that my grandchildren, I have a two-year-old, a three-year-old now, and an eight-year-old, and they are my everything. So I was born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee, live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I just came here to go to college and to just, you know, I didn't think I was going to start a family here, but I did, you know, at some point. So um, there I started working for state government in my early 20s. I think I was about 21 when I started there because my parents told me, go to school, get a good education and get one job. So my mom had been working at the post office forever, ever since I was born. So that's all I knew was one job. So it just so happened that state government was the first job to contact me. And I thought like, wow, this is going to be great. And uh, I got all my weekends off, my 401k, all of that, holidays. But I realized at some point that I was not making a lot of money. Because see, with state government, you only get like 25 cent raises, 50 cent raises a year. So when I, when, I, when I thought about that, I'm thinking, wow, I'm putting in all of these times, all of this effort. I'm putting in all of my energy to something that at the end of the day, it's not going to even make sense. So they start sending me this annual income statement. And what it tells you is it tells you where you are when you started, where you are in the midst of it, how many raises you will get. And then when you retire, this is what we're going to give you. And they had been sending me that, but I never paid attention to it until, um, you know, it, it, I had been there for a while. And I started thinking, wow, this is like that spinning wheel thing. I am keep working. I keep putting in these hours, but my money is not going up. Inflation is going up, but my money is not going up. So I knew I needed to do something different. I just didn't know what. And there's a lot of people out there. It's like, man, I'm praying for something. I'm wishing for something. I'm hoping for something. But I don't know. I don't know the skills. I don't have a lot of skills. I don't know what I can do to, to sacrifice what I'm trying to get, right? And so it was just so happened that one of my friends, she sent me traveling. I was traveling now. I was one of those broke people that was traveling all the time. And she said, Melody, you're traveling. <laughs> she said, you're traveling anyway. You should come out and take a look at what I'm doing. Now, I have to say that I was smart enough to know that I can go, I can get the information. That don't mean I have to join nothing, right? I knew that. So I said, if I can go and I can get the information, who knows, I may get the freedom. So I actually went out and I looked at the travel industry and I began to dream right there when I was sitting there. 
because I saw all of these uh, these glamorous trips that they put up. I saw all this. And then I saw that they were making money off of the things that they were doing anyway. So then director, that's when I started dreaming again, because I never knew. I said, now I could travel. I love helping people. I love making money. Now, this is something I may can do. So that's how the journey started for me. Because I did not, I did not know what I was going to do. I state government was all I had done, so I didn't know. But I knew I needed something else. I knew that there was something else for me. I just was not sure. So it wasn't until I saw the travel industry, the kind of money that you can make in there, that's when I knew that I was on to something. Oh, I love that story because um, I'm one of those. Why are you talking about me like that, travel broke? <laughs> I like to call it travel bougie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I totally understand that. So that was your journey, right? So how long ago was that? And um, you said at that point, you already been working with state government for a very, very long time. And that was really your first, you know, job. So you're very loyal to the job, right? And when you realize that what you're going to get later on in life wasn't what you thought it would be because that was eye opening, right? Um, when you started your tribal business, how how old are you at this point in the industry? Because you know, I also like to let people know that you discovered the company that we're with now, but you started in the industry way longer before, so your experience really speak to your success today. So how long ago was that when you started? So I, yeah, so I started in the travel industry in my mid-30s. So I was in the mid, my mid-30s. Now be mindful that I had heard about uh, network marketing companies and I always shied away from them because it sounded like it was a, one of those things and it was a pyramid and people, people do that because they can't get a job, right? I always looked at network marketing like that. Like people don't do, they only do that stuff because they can't get a job. It's a pyramid type thing, a scheme. Right. So I always shied away from network marketing. Now, be mindful that people had always brought me stuff uh, to look at. Right. Come join my business. But that's just something I did not want to do. But now when I saw this travel, honestly, when I went to this travel presentation, I did not know that it was a network marketing. I thought it was just a way that I could travel and, uh, you know, and enjoy life. So when I saw this, I'm thinking, wow, network marketing is really you just marketing to your network, the things that they already doing anyway. That's what I learned. So I was in my early, so I was in my mid thirties when I, when I found this travel uh, thing and I'm like, wow, I love to travel. Everybody around me is traveling. We, I love making money. I can just share this business and, and help other people do the exact same thing. So I was already going on girls trips. I was already playing in family reunions. I was already doing all of that, traveling on a budget, right? But bougie, bougie budget is what I was doing. So I said, I, when, when I saw this, I'm thinking, wow, if I can travel the world, if I can get paid to do it, and I can help other people do the exact same thing and get success out of that, wow, that would be like a dream come true. Because a lot of times what I'm finding out is that people are, a lot of people make money, but they hate what they're doing. You know what I mean? You have a lot of people out there that's making money, but they hate going to work every day. They hate the people that they work around. They hate, me. but I'm like over here, wow, our vacation, we get a chance to go out, our playground, our, well, we, we're in meetings on the beach. Like our meetings, our job meetings, if you want to call it, employee meetings are on the beach. When I talk to my team, we're sitting on the beach discussing how we're going to do this. That right, talking about where we're going to do lunch. So it was just a different vibe for me. So this travel industry, I mean, um, it, it's people are already doing it. And what I love about it now is that because after the pandemic, now travel is booming. It's booming. It's not on trial. Everybody is doing it. I came back from Chicago um, just on Sunday and the lines, we had to wait uh, in the air. We, we actually had to wait on the runway for two and a half hours because there was nowhere for us to, 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 to dock, if you will, because everybody, all of the travel, all of the other planes were either loading or unloading the people. So we had to sit there on the runway until we were able to find a place to, right? And so I'm like, what, what is this? And that was one o'clock in the morning, a.m., and when I got off the plane and into the Atlanta Hartsfield Airport, I thought it was 12 noon. It was so crowded. And that let me know that, wow, travel is back. It is here to stay. It is booming. 
That is so exciting. And I know exactly what you mean because I've been flying with you at those early hours and it's just, it is like, what is going on? People sitting on the side, just waiting, being busy, you know, and we're in the industry. So that's very exciting. So yeah. you started uh, in your thirties, but you had some success there, but not to the success, to the extent that it is now. So then what happened in between there to the company that you're with now and, and how your success evolved? Well, when I started, I was looking at the travel. I wanted to travel and I was still working a full-time job. So understand when I started out, I just needed Miss, um, the, the founder of the company that I'm with now, Mr. Planet Marketing, Mr. Bradley. He asked me, in a, I was in a meeting. I was in one of those private business reception. And he asked me, he said, how much money would you like to make? And I said, uh, $2,000 would be great. Because I'm thinking about, wow, if I could just have some cushion, $2,000 in my pocket, that'd be great. And so I said, I would like to make $2,000. And his response was a week. And it blew my mind because I was talking about a month. And so I said, no, I was talking about a month. And he was like baffled, like, oh, that's easy. That's $500 a week. And I was like, oh, okay. So we said, he said, so we set a goal and it was a 2K project. The 2K project was making $2,000 a month, which is $500 a week. So we rolled up our sleeves and we went to, we worked together. And when I looked up, I was making $500 a week. And I was like, wow, I did this on a part-time basis. See, I started small. And then I said, well, man, if I can do 2,000, surely I can do 4,000. So I said, okay, let's do, let's go back. We've got a 4K project. So that was $1,000 a week. So we started working, working and we made $1,000 every single week. And I was like, wow, it's something to this because I started out one way, but now I'm here. And so we went from 2000 a, a month to 4000 a month. And I said, well, I'm making four. I can do six. So we went from four to six and then we went to eight. Now, when I started making $8,333 a month part time, I didn't realize that I was a six figure income earner and I was doing this part time. Then it's like, okay, really at the six, when I was making over 6,000 a month, I was looking at, okay, now it's time to make some decisions because now I'm making more part-time than I am on my full-time job, but I'm spending way more time on my full-time job. So now it's time to make some adjustments, right? So that's when I started looking at retirement and early retirement uh, to come out to get me the, you know, my pension. I wanted to make sure that I got a pension, but at the same time, I wanted to uh, still work my business. So that decided, and my goal was to retire before I was 50 but I was able to do it at 47, yeah, as a result of this business. So now from 8,000 a month to 10,000 a month to 12,000 a month, I love this because there's a blueprint. So right now I'm on a 20K a month project and now I know the blueprint on how to do that. And that's to get people to 2K a month, 4K a month, 6K. So we're following the right leader. We're following the right cat. All we're going to get is success to the bank. Just that simple. So um, you, you've been successful and I've watched you, you know, grow and you've helped me grow as well uh, in the industry. Uh, what I want to know is your, the challenges and the sacrifices that you had to make to make this work, because we don't want people to think that you come in here and everybody's just going to get rich together. And that's just not the truth of what, what we do. Um, so, so what were the um, challenges that you had to overcome while going toward, you know, your six figures uh, part-time with this, this uh, business. So one of the things that I'm talking to all of your, your viewers that are uh, working a full-time job, my work ethic had to kick in. So when I saw the, the amount of money that I could make on my part-time business, I knew that it was going to take, I, I knew that it had to, my work ethic. I have excellent work ethic, but I knew it was time for me to kick it in. So I began to start strategizing. How can I, because I know I got to give this job 40 hours, 50 hours a week. When you look at it, it's really about 50 hours because you get up, you think you're doing eight hours a day, but it's really about 12 hours because it takes you an hour to get dressed and get ready to get there. Then an hour, right? So you think it's eight, it's really about 10, 12 a day with that. So how can I work around this and still be successful? So I just decided that I was going to sacrifice a sacrifice a little time, a little bit more time so that I could have the, the success that I want. 
So director, at that time, what it looked like was that some mornings I would get up and I would um, go to work, have my suitcase ready to, to go to work. So as soon as I get off of work, I would take the train to the uh, airport, right, right from work, take the train to the airport go out, fly to Oklahoma or fly somewhere, do a meeting with my team there, right? And because the meetings were late, we would, we would hang out late, we would build relationships, we would do that. It was late, so I would have to stay over and then the next morning, get up, take a 5 a.m. train, I mean flight back to Atlanta, right? And then take that same train back to work and sit in my office the next morning. Nobody knew what I had done of the last 24 hours, right? I left work, go in, and it's, it's like my hat kicked on for my business because my business had to get done. And so I would actually fly out somewhere that same day, do an event, build relationships, meet people, building my team. And then the next morning, hop back on a flight and head back to work and then work my business with integrity. Right. And so those were there were those were a lot of days and a lot of nights like that. So there were sacrifices that I had to make and I had to get the buy in from my family, let them know, hey, this is we got I got to do this for a short period of time so that I can get long term sustainable income. So, see, a lot of people don't understand that sometimes these short sacrifices, because they are sacrifices. And if you do them right, it's not going to be long. That's why I say short. But a lot of times people, they stop and they start back. They stop and they start back. They start saying, oh, this not working. Oh, I don't see the results right away. Oh, I don't do, right? And then they find out that they don't get any of it. But me, I said, I'm going to do this, right? When I started making the $2,000, it wasn't right away. It took months, right? When I went from two to four, it wasn't right away. Right? But I saw that I could do it and I stayed at it. So now when you're talking about 15 years in, this is the result of starting, never stopping. People don't let your foot right. You got to continue on. You don't want to, you may slow down, but you definitely don't want to pull over and stop, right? Because here, so I would just really say that that was the sacrifice that I had to make, uh, leaving my family, leaving my, you know, babies, leaving them and going out, getting it. And so now those sacrifices, those sacrifices that I made years ago now affords me the freedom the financial freedom, the time freedom, and the personal freedom that I have. I want to tell this story. I remember um, with my son, I remember my son, uh, when he was younger in school, he must have been about five or six or so, but he needed, um, and he, he was in school and they wanted um, donut, like they wanted me to bring donuts or something to the school. And I was like, okay, yeah, I wanted to do something because I was always working and I just did not have time. And this was in his younger years. And I said, uh, yeah, I bring the donuts. And they said, okay, well, we're going to need the donuts uh, at seven o'clock. And I was like, okay, that'd be great. I have the donuts there at seven. So the next day, I, uh, they said the program is going to be at seven. We need the 730. We need the donuts at seven. But the next day I was there, I was excited about getting the donuts. And that night, seven o'clock that night, I brought the donuts. And I did not realize that it was seven o'clock that day during the morning. And I'm thinking, man, I'm working during the morning. How do they expect me to bring donuts? And it was the most, I was so upset because my son, he was expecting me. I was like, we were both excited, but I had it wrong. I thought it was at night where most people can do something at night because you're working during the day. But it was during the day. And I just remember saying, oh my goodness, I could not because I couldn't get off of work. I couldn't write. And so I'm saying this to say that those sacrifices then, I remember that time. So even when I was going through running, doing this run, now I'm at a place where not only do I get a chance to go to my grandkids' schooling and to sit there with them, but I get to buy donuts for the whole class, for the whole school, as a result of the sacrifices that I made years ago. Ooh, I love that. Yeah, and I, I totally understand. I have two kids, and there are times when I was working, and I would miss Valentine's Day trying to have the cards, and I had to go get it in the morning because um, you miss things when you're working. Mm -hmm. you're tired you go home you gotta feed your kids you gotta get them ready for the next day it's just being a mom and then working full time you know the balance of it all is not easy but you've made a sacrifice because you know what it could do for your family so I'm going to ask you about that you know because uh, we always talk about having a plan b when your plan a is still working so it really stood out to me during the pandemic 
So tell us what this business was able to do for you during the pandemic when everyone was freaking out, not having work. Some people have to be laid off, some people being furloughed, um, and some people not getting paid. My salon was shut down and you were in your home, but you were still getting paid. So tell me that what that was like. And then also you had a life changing experience during that time and what this business has truly done for you. Wow. So yeah, so during the pandemic, so actually I retired a little bit before the pandemic, right? So I retired a little bit before the pandemic and be mindful that I had tried to talk to my coworkers, my colleagues about this business way before the pandemic, right? They saw me with my success. They knew that I had retirement on the book. So they saw what I was doing, but for whatever reason, they were a little skeptical, but didn't want it. So when the pandemic hit, what I love about this is that we have residual income. And residual is something that we do one time and we get paid over and over again. So during the residual, our incomes actually went up in our business because we wouldn't, we were, even though we were not traveling as much, right? We were not flying on planes. We were not staying in hotels. We were in our, we were in our homes, but people realized that, wow, this job that I've been faithful to for the last 20 years, for the last 30 years, I've been faithful to them. But during this time, they're not faithful to me as I was to them. So we started getting a lot of calls. I got a lot of calls from people saying, okay, Mel, tell me about this again. Because now they're at a time now where, man, I got to do something different because now I see, I see what you were saying. It's an eye opener for me. So now some of those same people came back and said, okay, tell me about this now. I want to go ahead and fix my roof before it leaks again. Right now the bottom falling out, but now I need to be ready. So during that pandemic, a lot of times people, a lot of people went back and revamped their lives. They realized, wow, this job that I've been committed to over all of these years is not committed to me because companies were letting you go left and right. No questions asked. They had to look at their bottom line. And if you weren't in their bottom line, you're out right? You're out of line. And so a lot of that, so a lot of people joined with us. A lot of people came and we were still making the money because it's residual income. We were not traveling as much. We didn't have to get on airplanes and things of that nature. So it was really great. But one of the things, so I went through some health challenges during the pandemic, which was, uh, you know, kind of put a stop, but I love it because my, my, my business did not stop. And that's the thing about having residual income because residual works even when you can't. And when you don't, right? So I love, I, I love that. And then here recently, right after that, I actually lost my son, the son that you hear me talk about. Uh, he was my one and only, not only son, but only child. And so he passed away in a motorcycle accident. He was uh, hit on his motorcycle by a drunk driver and he passed away instantly. Right. So he left me two boys, you know, my, my eight, my seven, my eight-year-old and my two-year-old grand, grandbaby. Uh, but even with that, it allowed me to, uh, I was able to pay everything. I had already had everything set up. So I didn't have to wait on no insurance money. I didn't have to do a GoFundMe. I didn't have to write none of that because I was already prepared. I was prepared saving money for what I didn't even know I was going to need. One of the things when I was going toward re retirement was that I paid off all of my bills. I got out all of my, all of debt. And then I started saving monies. Right. So I was getting prepared for retirement anyway. So I didn't know that all of that preparation that I did was going to be for the very time such as then. So I was able to pay cash for everything. And it was the best of the best. I said, I don't care what it is or what it costs. I want it. Whatever the best. I want to lay them down with the best. And uh, it was just amazing to me because insurance companies and things that they don't have the same. They don't have the sympathy for you when you lose a loved one. Right. They don't care. They want to look and see if you paid your premium. They want to look and see if you did right. They don't care. It doesn't matter to them. And so I love that because I had already as a result of, of me being in this business and the love that was shown through 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 my colleagues, through my business partners, through the team, through my directors. Right. It was just amazing. The support that you get you know, when you join with us. So all of that, is, all of that is tied into that. So now we get a chance to make money together. We have fun together. We cry together. We uplift one another, right? And so that's just, that's that to me is a true thing. And it just cannot be replaced by anything. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for sharing with us your story because it really impacted me. 
I saw that you were, you know, when, when things were happening and um, what would really take most people out, right? You chose to come back and work this business and really show me what it's like, you know, when, when life hits you, you just keep on going and you keep doing it and you keep doing it until you, you get what it is that you're trying to go after. And we're doing this for our families, right? And so what is your driving force behind um, all of that? Because it takes um, a certain type of strength to be able to go through something like that. You know, um, that wasn't that long ago. That was last year, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Last right. year. And I still see you show up in the mornings and show up to the events um, as someone that's following your leadership that meant so much. And there were so many people that was impacted, inspired by you. So what is it, what is your why? And where does your strength come from? So I, one thing that I do understand is that my storms should not affect other people's success, okay? So just because I'm going through something, there are people like yourself and all of the hundreds of people that, that, that's in, that follow you, 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 you get, when you, when you, um, when you, gave and said that, hey, I'm going to start this business. I want to do this business. You started trust, you, 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 you gave that trusting that I'm going to help you go where you want to go. Everybody that joined forces with you, they're saying that I trust you to get me where I can go. So it doesn't matter of the things that I'm going through. I still have people that I promised that if you stick with me, you stick and stay, you're going to get your pay. So who am I to shone away from that or to, to shrink back or to sit down because I have stuff that's going on? I told you years ago, hey, director, you follow me. You're going to make more money than you've ever made, right? So it's a responsibility that I have to the people that believed in me, that trusted me, that I inspired. It's like, no, I got to go. I, 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 we got work to do. So we got to still roll up our sleeves and go to and, and, and go to work. And I think it's with having that mindset that your storms can affect. Yeah, we all go through storms, but life is 10 percent of what happens to you, 90 percent of how you handle it. So when you're when you're when you're in business with people, you have to continue on. If I owned a, um, a McDonald's franchise, right, the people that own uh, Chick-fil-A franchise, right, but they don't shut down because somebody had a death in the family. They still open. So we still got to be open for business. No, not that we don't hurt, that we don't mourn, that we don't grieve. Yeah, that's part of life. But the reality is I can't shut down because something is going on in my life when I have thousands of other people that are looking to do the exact same thing. It's not fair to them. And that's one of the things that keep me motivated and keep me going is because I have other people that want to retire from corporate, other people that want to make a six-figure income. There are people that I have right now on 2K projects trying to get to 4K, to 6K, right? So it's irresponsible of me to sit down and to squaddle in whatever drama or whatever is going on in my life and forget about the people. And it's the people that I help are the ones that help me to make six figures. So who am I to get six figures and leave the people, the very people that help me get there? Right. So that's the thing that motivates me, that keeps me going, that keeps strength. I understand that we're all put here for a reason and for a season. So we're all going to pass at some point. I can't determine when that is. I can't be mad at nobody when my son is taking right. Right. When it's his turn, when it's his turn, it's his turn, because we all have a turn. We're all going to leave this earth. So the only thing that I can do is be thankful for the years that I had, that, that he was here with me. Be thankful for everything that I learned as a parent from him. Be grateful for the time. And I'm glad that I still have my energy and, my, and I'm still vibrant to be able to go out and finish what we started together. And to make sure that the grandkids, the children that he left me, would be so far from the poverty line that they would never know what it feels like to be broke. That's why I do what I do. Wow, that's so beautiful. And you've done that. And uh, not to mention, she, Director Melody Washington, got the surprise of her life during our convention last year when she won the Iron Woman Award 
for 2022. And that was the most amazing thing to see what describe that feeling when you got the announcement, because that was the first time too, um, that I see you go up there winning like that award for me. Like, I just, you know, I just didn't know that award really existed in the first place, you know? Um, so when they announced it and they call your name, uh, I remember my feeling, uh, how proud I was and emotional that was. So describe what it was like for you. Well, at first I didn't, uh, you know how you, you know, because they call in the names. Um, I didn't, I didn't really think about, I didn't think, it's like you heard your name, but you didn't hear your name. And then when people start shouting it, then the people beside me was like, oh my God, they sh-. and it's like, wait a minute. And I, all of a sudden, you know, just emotion start coming over me because I knew what I had done. I knew what I had just gone through. I knew that, right, and that iron, that iron woman is just, an iron man, it's just talk about how the resilient, the relentless, how even in the midst of storms, you continue to move on, you continue to go. And I think that was one of the most honorable awards that a person can get because it tells the strength, your strength, even in the midst of the storm. So as I was walking up the steps, I don't even know if you noticed it or not, where our direct, when our Linda Moore, when the top income earners, they came, they literally had to grab me and help me up the steps because it was like, I got weak at the knees. Like, are you serious? And just to know that somebody appreciates you, even in the midst of the storm that you're going through. So when I was up there, I, I was I was speechless. I mean, I was lost for words. And the only thing that I can remember was that what my son, you know, would say, hey, go get that. Go get, get that bag. Get after it. You know, that's how they talk. And so I just remember, I kept hearing his voice. Like, man, I'm proud of you. Go get that bag. Go do it. You did it. So that's what was going through me going, you know, during that time. So, whoo, yeah, that was, that was Ooh, deep. Yeah, it was so deep and amazing. And I would never forget it. It was, it was just very uh, powerful. And you impacted not only me, but then everyone that was there to, uh, to be a part of that journey with you, you know, because, you know, some people don't know, you know, because I was saying earlier when I first started, I said, you see the glory, mm-hmm. but you don't know the story. And you have really gone through all the phases of failure, success, and everything, all the cycles of it, you know, not saying that failure was something that you ever did, but it wasn't always easy, right? Because people look at failure as you stopping, but you look at failure, no, I'm going. Oh, absolutely. 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 And I do want to say that, and that's why we're a team of no excuses, because everything I've been through it, right? Whether it's divorce whether it is, uh, you know, children, children sick, health issues, death. I mean, every excuse that people come up with is something that we've already been through, right? Now it's so much that my son losing, uh, losing a close loved one. That was the, le- you know, that was a big hit, but every excuse now in the book, whether it's bankruptcy, whether it's, stra- whatever it is, it's like, you got some leaders that have gone through it all. So if they got through it, then there is nothing for you. So yeah, we take away all the excuses. You sure you guys do, all of you. (laughs) I've heard other stories. I was like, man, you went through, wow. (laughs) Everything. And I mean, everything that you can imagine that could go through people's lives that look like you and me, they have gone through it. And because of this opportunity, it's helped them to overcome because truly the financial stability that it takes to take care of your loved ones or when you're going through situations is mm-hmm. really what is necessary. So let me ask you this, Director Melody Washington, from the bottom of your heart, you think about all the people that are thinking and um, looking the opportunity, right? And perhaps I all, they're always researching and YouTube is a great platform and they're researching. They come across us. And they're probably glued to it because your story is just, you know, they can't help it. So they're thinking, huh, well, maybe this is something I I could do and maybe possibly be for me. What would be your advice as far as to help them to know that this would be the right course of action that would help them to change their life? So I've been with the industry now for 15 years. I've always been with our founder, 
CEO, Mr. Donna Bradley. So I've been with him from, from the beginning of my career. And we have gone through some challenges. We have gone through some tribulations throughout the years. We have gone through other companies. And Mr. Bradley has always been the top income earner of every company. He's brought us over there, right? 30,000, 60,000, whatever it is, he has always been the top on top of his game. But what he has, what he always run into was that either the founders of the company didn't do right. People want to add into stuff. They wanted to make money off of us instead of not with us. You know, there's always something that was going on. So Mr. Bradley decided that he's going to get his own. And he's going to help because his heart was always to help ordinary people make extraordinary income, right? Some people want to get paid off of network marketers, right? So that's and so we found that those were those companies that were doing that. So the very first company that I was that I was in, I actually came in at the very end of momentum. So I knew what it looked like, but I had never experienced it, right? So Mr. Bradley got a chance to kind of get a little bit of that momentum that was coming in. And we, but I heard on stage how people went from, they were making hundreds and thousands a, a, a month, right? They was making $100,000 a month, 200,000. Well, I heard it on stage. So I knew that it was possible, but I had not experienced it. That company ended up going, they, they filing some stuff and whatever. So, and then we went from other companies. So we've been our network marketing career looking for momentum trying to get that momentum because we knew that if we get that momentum, momentum is that's where all the monies are made in network marketing. So after searching high and low and trying to find it, we could not find the momentum. So Mr. Bradley decided to get his own company, partner with a 30 year old travel company. And now we're here and we created it. So because we could not find it, we've created it. So for all of your listeners, all of your viewers, viewers on here, the reason why you would want to join forces with us right now is because we're at the brinks. We're at 92,000 right now. And we've declared that when we hit 100,000 uh, strong, that's where the momentum is going to kick in, right? Now, the momentum, is the, it can last five years, 10 years. We don't know how long it's going to last, but I do know that it's a lot of money that's being made during that momentum. So I'm excited about this moment right here is the time, is the moment that we have been looking for all of our network marketing career. All of our career, we have been looking for this very moment where we are right now. So if nothing else, you want to get in and get positioned so that when this wave hits, you can be in the water. Ooh, I'm in the water. <laughs> I'm in the water. Um, how about for those people who are new and this is the first time in network marketing and they are experiencing some things that all networker, network marketers experience through their career. You know, the rejection, the disappointments, mm -hmm. the fact that, oh my gosh, you think your family, the, one, the, the people that's going to, your friends that's going to support you the most and they don't. And it's very discouraging to them. And that's a hard blow, right? And most people, they come in, they find out, oh my gosh, that the, the work is not the hard part, the rejection part and the disappointments that they have. How would you, what kind of advice would you have for them as they're working and push through that part in order to get to where you are in the future? So what you have to realize is that network marketing is a sport. This is like a sport. So if you think about the NFL, if you think about the NBA, when they go into, I'm going to take the NFL. When those players go out on the field, they know at some point they're probably going to get hurt, right? They're going to, if they're trying to get to the end zone, if they're trying to get to the end zone, they're going to get tackled. They're going to get hurt. It's a possibility that they may get, right? They, they, but they go into it knowing that, right? So I want you to look at that. But they make millions of dollars doing it. It is the other's team responsibility to try to knock them out, to try to hurt them, to try to keep them from scoring, to try to, right? It's the other team's responsibility to do that. So in network marketing over here, you go in knowing that at some point I'm going to get rejected. I'm going to get uh, disappointed. I'm going to get hurt. People are going to know. You go in knowing that. It is the other person's responsibility, right? The other people that you talk to, it is their job. Right. You don't get hurt if you're not talking to anybody. Think about the NFL player when they're, when they're going down. The only way, if you're not on the field playing, you won't get hurt. 
You're supposed to. They're just doing what they're supposed to do. So if you look at it like that, if this is our sport, this is our job, we're supposed to get the rejection. It's great. The more rejection we get, the more money we make. Just like as you're going down the field, and right? As you're trying to score and get that touchdown, the more times you get tackled, you're getting closer to it. As you could, right? It's the same thing. So if you can look at it like that, it's not personal, it's business. So if you look at it like that, the people are not rejecting you, they're rejecting the business, right? They're reje- and it's just for a moment. So unless somebody, and most people just, the, the rejection is like, oh, well, I don't have time. Oh, well, I'm not sure. Oh, well, let me check with my spouse. Oh, well, let me check, with, right? Those are the rejections that most people are getting. Nobody ever tell you, no, don't ever blankly blank call me blank blank. Don't people ever say that? And if they do, it's probably once or twice in your lifetime. That's it. So they're doing what they're supposed to do. So I think that if we look at it as this is a sport, I'm supposed to do this. I signed up for this. I went in knowing that this is what it is. And when you get that, I think, I mean, that's just, and this is like relentless talk. I think that once you understand that, you won't take it so personal. Because you know that they're supposed to. They're just doing what they're supposed to do. And your job is to continue on and to learn how to get better. Because the NFL players trying to figure out, okay, how can I get to that end zone? How can I get, right? And as you continue to get tackled or rejected, it's going to teach you how to get back up and maneuver through so that you can be a better person in your personal development. I love it. So, you know, that leads me to my next question is this. So that you you have been working over 15 years. That means that you've endured many, many hits, many, many no's, many. Boy, it doesn't affect you anymore, right? And it probably does for a second, but you keep going. So I learned that from just watching you too. Um, let me hear the side of when you did get a yes. And when that person said, I want to be a director. I want to go two star. I want to go next level like you. Now, what does that feel like? And how does that affect your business? I can talk about my two star director, uh, Maya Slade here. When we we started, she was just kind of in it for, okay, yeah, I'm just going to support, right? And she came in and she supported. And I was like, okay, we need to do a private business reception. Let's launch your business, right? Because what people don't understand is that you have, people need to know what you have. So even if they just come and, and, and see that, hey, there's a travel business. So next time that you book travel, book it through me or what, you know, you don't necessarily have to join. They need to just see what you have. So as a result of that, you're going in, 10 people show up, three people decide, dang, I want to do this. Sign up. And then when you look at it, it's 500, 400 people later. She got 400 people as a result of just one person, right? I can do, I have tons of stories like that. But the reality is it may not be you. It may be somebody else that love traveling, love making money, love having fun that would come in and kill this business, right? Somewhere down the line, we found you in a bit. You ended up there, right? Now, team of well over 200 people on your way to two-star director. So you never know. Those who you think won't will, those who you think will won't. You won't know the difference until you start working with them. So yeah, that's a it's a it's a two edged. So you just have to do the work, do the thing, and you should have the power. <laughs> and I just have to say, listen, it, when you said sport, it actually becomes really fun if you look at it like, wow, you know, yeah, I may go through a lot of the no's and the rejection, but but when you do find a superstar and you see their um, growth and you see their excitement and you see the light bulb goes off. It's one of the most rewarding things. So tell me what have been the most, one of the, what are, what are the most rewarding things for you um, so far because of this business? What do you get out of this? Well, I just love the fact that now the financial freedom, right? The time freedom, the personal freedom, because I was not able to do the things that I wanted to do either a, because I didn't have the time or B, because I didn't have the money. Most of the time, C, I didn't have the time or the money, right? But now, as a result of this business, I get a chance to do that. I get a chance to be with my grandbabies. Now, the stuff that I couldn't do for my son, because I was working all the time, now I can do it as grandma, right? Now I can go to the schools. Now I can take donuts to the whole class, right? Now I can go on the field trips. 
do the things that that means a lot because of the time that you that that you have right and then there's a lot of my there are a lot of business partners that work this business on a part-time basis so they don't have as much time during the day that I have so it is rewarding to me to be able to help them create their legacy while they're at work so I actually help on behalf of them while they're working their full-time job because I have the time freedom, the time to do that. It's nothing like being able to jump on a plane and go somewhere and then being able to book it the day of, fly there, right? Handle your business, have lunch, and then come back because you have the time freedom, right? And I can't wait. My goal is for us. I can get to have some of my top directors. We can all uh, Hawaii get together and fly to Paris. We don't even have any luggage. We're going to go there. We're going to shop when we get there. We're going to have food. We're going to have lunch, right? Fly on back. Like, that's just my goal. That's just what I want, right? We have our own yacht. We have our private jet to take us over there. We're shopping for the day, eating, having a great time, and then come on back because we all have time freedom, personal freedom, financial freedom, and there's nothing to worry about. So can you imagine that being your lifestyle? It's just, I'm just calling you up. Hey, Hawaii, let's just go. Let's fly over to Paris real quick. What sure. you doing? Right. Oh, I'm in. <laughs> That's the life I'm going after. <laughs> Me too. I'm in. You got you. You know I'm there. Absolutely. I try to do that now, and I don't have it yet. <laughs> I can only imagine when you have it. As a matter of fact, when I call you, uh, Hawaii, you want to go? You already in Paris? Oh, I'm already here. Y'all, come on. <laughs> Yes, that's, that that's where we're going. going. That is where we're going. I love it. I love it. Okay, so um, thank you so much. Uh, I always love talking to you, but this platform has really been a, just beautiful. I, it's more than I imagined it to be. So I appreciate you saying, hey, I'm up for the challenge. Okay, well, why, what you got me doing? <laughs> and um, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your energy. I appreciate your relentlessness, you know, modeling it for the team. So I just want to say publicly how proud I am to be a part of your organization and the blooming relationship that we have just worked hard to develop and to sustain and to grow and to keep. You know, um, all those words uh, mean so much to me because I really truly mean it. So I, I thank you for, you know, sharing your story. I know it hasn't been easy for you to let your walls down in such a way to help more people. So I appreciate you so much for being on today and sharing your story. Well, I wanna thank uh, you. Can I thank you for having me? Yeah, I wanna thank yes. you for having me and just for all that you do. And I'm so proud of you as well. And you are the epitome of impact player. An impact player is that player that comes in and change the whole dynamics of the game. And you are one that did that for the team. And it is you, your strength, your tenacity that keeps me going. You were one of the reasons I saw your face that popped up that said, you got people that are going after it. That's just as relentless. That's just a, that they're going after it. You cannot stop. So I want you to know in front of all of your viewers that you are the reason, one of the reasons why I do what I do and why I go so strong, because I know with your, your legacy for your children, for your family that you're leaving. And I have not done justice until I help you get exactly what you're after so I thank you for that too and we're gonna do this thing together we are going to Paris to Bora Bora we're gonna do it all together yes. Tahiti uh, yes yes Tahiti <laughs> all of it I don't care where it is really because <laughs> we're gonna go on jet so it's gonna be nice places <laughs> yes amazing. so I love it I have not it, you know we have something now that we enjoy doing right I don't enjoy selling stuff I, re I really don't. I don't like selling. I don't like pushing products. I don't like getting you to try this pill. I don't like trying to get you to make your face. No, but I do love traveling. So we could talk all day about traveling. Where are you going? Where are you taking the kids? Where would you like to go? Let me All day travel. So when you find something you love to do, you never work a day in your life. And that's what I mean. So I want to close it out with this. What are the three uh, advice that you would give everyone that's watching who really, who want to succeed like you have. What is the three advice for them before we uh, end this live? The first one I would say is jump. Jump just means go out there and do it. Jump in the pool, whether you can swim or not. 
because you learn how to swim. The director was, who I, I don't know if you know it now, you heard the story, but when I learned how to swim, I jumped in the pool and I said, I am not getting out of this pool until I learn how to swim. I jumped in the pool that day and I, st I stayed there until I learned how to swim because that was one of my dreams is to learn how to swim because where I'm going, I need to know how to swim. So jump, whether you can swim or not, that means do the thing, give out the business card, talk to the person, do it so that you can have the power. That's number one. Number two is you cannot give up. The only way you, you don't fail. The only way you fail is when you quit. Because if you quit, then there's nothing else. But as long as you fail, all you got to do is keep moving. Fail just really you falling back, but you're still going up, right? So don't ever quit. Continue on. There's going to be bumps and bruises. There are going to be things that, you know, happen in your life. But at the end of the day, the only way you fail in this business is if you quit. If you don't quit, you continue to move on. You're making progress. You're doing better than most because most quit. So you're already ahead of the game. And it's the slight edge. Number three is the slight edge. Do the simple things consistently over a period of time until it becomes a habit. Do those simple things. Don't try to go out there and give out 20 business cards a day. You may do three a day. You may do one a day. Don't try to talk to everybody and throwing up on them. No, you may talk to one person a day, get the information, right? Do that. So do that, do that. Jump, go out there and jump. Make sure that you're doing that and being consistent, the slight edge. Uh, would be that. So those are the things that I would have to, that I would leave for your listeners. Thank you so much. That is the reason why you are the voice of Planet Marketing, okay? She is known as the voice of Planet Marketing. She does one of the best presentations. She makes me laugh. I may have seen it 20,000 times. It's still one of the best. So Thank you so much uh, for all of that. And right now she's uh, donning the sapphire ring. I may have forgotten to mention that the sapphire ring in our presentation, that just signifies that you are actually earning over $100,000 residually. It just follows you year after year after year. If you want, uh, want to be technical, that's over $8,333 per month. And you get that in two executive mo uh, consecutive months and you receive the Sapphire Ring. And she is ready to give that Sapphire Ring to her next person in her team so she will be able to don the next ring which is the ruby ring so that's exciting i just want to make sure we acknowledge director melody washington our three-star director thank you so much for your transparency for your time today and i appreciate you so much uh, guys um before we get off make sure if you love the content leave us some comments below you know, share this. We want you to leverage her story, uh, you know, to help you in this business. So it's not just about myself or about Director Melody Washington. It's about the uh, success of the whole, right? So if somebody uh, shared this story with you and this video with you, make sure that if it touched you, it inspired you, and it helped you to make that decision and make that jump. Uh, to get back with that person who invited you, right? Because we want to always have integrity in our business and protect the planet. And so get back with that person who invited you and get your business started. And you're going to be in business for yourself, but never ever by yourself. Subscribe to my channel. Thank you again, everyone, for your support. Director Melody Washington, it's been a pleasure. And I will see you tonight. <laughs> oh, that's right.